Hello guys, this is Code in Code and this is 26th lecture of Graph Theory Part 1 series. And in this lecture, we'll be learning how you can find out and print a cycle in a given graph, right? We'll be learning the algorithm, how you can do that. We'll be implementing that as well. And also at the end of the video, I'll be, I mean, at the end of the lecture, I'll be also giving you a practice problem so that you can go ahead and implement it and see that you are able to understand whatever you have learned. Okay, so let's get started. So the problem statement says you are given a graph, undirected graph, and you with n nodes and m edges, you have to find and print a cycle if there exists one. Okay, so we don't have to find all different cycles that are possible. Uh, that is a different question. In this question, we are only going to find a one cycle and print it. So any of these three could have been possible and valid solution. One two four one, one two four one is a valid cycle. Same goes for two four. 3, 2, and so on. So these are all valid answers. Okay. So what are the prerequisites for this lecture? Again, let me clear, make, it, make it very clear. In this lecture, we'll be finding only one cycle, not all of them. And of course, prerequisite how recon, uh, recursion works because we are going to use DFS. So you should have the knowledge of DFS and how recursion works. If you have knowledge of DFS, most likely you already know how recursion works. So these are the prerequisites of the problem. Now this parent, uh, for example, suppose node X makes a DFS call to node Y. For example, if you are on node 1, you would make DFS call to node 5 and node 4. So for node 5 and node 4, 1 will be their parent. Okay. And suppose from main function, you made a DFS call to node 1. Uh, so no, not other, not any other node has made DFS call to node 1. Instead, you have made DFS call on node 1 from main function. So you can pass any invalid number like minus 1. Okay. So now you know what is parent. Let's continue and let me tell you how this overall algorithm will work. So I'll explain how this algorithm works with an example. So it's easy to follow for everyone. So let's go ahead. But before that, for all those who want to become a software developer or have just become the software developer, an academy brings you a platform where you can get access to weekly shows, which you can watch live. Some of the shows that are going live soon on an academy are hiding updates in startups and major tech companies, eligibility criteria for them and how to apply, how to approach code chef and pre-placement talks where HR from top companies come and talk about their hiring process, top 20 questions which are asked in interview and how to solve them. Okay. Accelerating development by using real projects, life journey of fellow coders working in fan companies and many more shows like that. You'll also have an option to interact with industry leaders on the platform and get a chance to take part in online mock interviews to sharpen your skills and get real time feedback. You get all of this and much more for a nominal fees of 999 for the entire year. And with my code, you can get the same for 899. If you think about how to get in big tech brands without a branded college tag, an academy have brought this show where love will talk about top interview questions usually asked for brand like uh, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Amazon, and LinkedIn, and how to solve them and respond in a way that will help you in cracking the job interviews. All of the relevant links and my code you can find in the description of this video. Now let's head back to our lecture. So suppose from the main function, you made a DFS call on node one, and since node one is not being called by other node, so we'll pass minus one as, it, as its parent. You can pass any invalid node number, right? So parent of node one is minus one. So as soon as you reach there, what you do, you'd mark it as visited. Pink color represents visited. Okay. And then you'll insert current node into the temp. So now in temp, we have one. Now here, what we are doing, we are going one by one in the adjacency list of node one and see what nodes are there. Okay. So in the adjacency list of node one, we have five. So we would make a DFS call on node five since node five is not visited. Okay. It's false. So what we'll do, we'll make a DFS call on node five. We'll as soon as you reach there, you would in the mark it as visited. That's why it's pink now. And node 5, you'll insert in the temp. So now in temp, we have 1 and 5. Now in the adjacency list of node 5, we'll search. So in the adjacency list of node 5, there is only one node that is node 1 itself. So node 1 is clearly not visit. I mean, all, node 1 is actually visited. So we'll come here and we'll check whether it's parent or not. If it is parent, of course, there, there will be an edge uh, between these two, right? So since node 1 is actually parent of node 5, so we will do nothing. So we have traversed all of the node five's uh, adjacency list. We'll come here. We'll remove node five here and return false. So I've removed node five from the temp and have returned false. You see. So now uh, for node one, this will this will continue. So the DFS has returned false, not true. So we will go for the next node. Next node is four. So of course we have made a DFS call on node four and we have inserted node four here. 
node 4 in the adjacency list of node 4 we have 3 so suppose we went to 3 in the adjacency list of 3 suppose we have 2 uh, which is there i mean so we made a dfs call to node 2 again whatever whatever we are making dfs call they are getting added into the temp right because of this line now in node 2 you see there are two nodes which are directly connected so it will go for node 3 in the adjacency list of node 2 currently we are at node 2 uh, we have 3 right so it will check whether it is visited of course it is already visited so we will come here so is parent equal to the current node clearly node 3 is parent of 2 right so we'll do nothing we'll go uh, we'll again take the next node which is node 4 so you see node 4 is visited and also node 4 is not parent of node 2 that means this condition tells you the existence of cycle so see if certain node is connected to other node which is already visited and that is not its parent for example for node 2 node 2 is connected to a vis already visited node which is node 4 and node 4 is clearly not its parent in that case what will happen uh this represents presence of a cycle that is what we have found here on node 2 right as soon as you found it what you will do you will insert node 4 again in the time variable right and return true that yep i have found a cycle so node 2 will return true so now we are at node 3 and we will continue here so uh, sorry we will continue here so dfs has returned true right so what it will do node 3 will also return true node 3 will return true to node 4 again we will continue here for node 4 this dfs call for node 4 has returned true so clearly it will also return true again we are at node 1 node 1 has received again true so it will also return true to the main function so see here we have successfully found a cycle so in the main function we will receive true that means we have found a cycle right so how you print the cycle cycle is this the last node start printing from the last node till you reach another instance of node 4 so this will represent a cycle for example 4 3 2 4 so 4 3 2 4 this represents a cycle so this is how you find out and print the cycle in the in the uh, what we say graph okay undirected graph now to print it uh, you can again start from the last node and keep printing till you reach a node which is equal to the last node as simple as that right so you can print it now finally a problem where you can implement the algorithm that you have just learned is this i'll be providing the link of this problem in the description of the video the problem is from cscs called round trick okay this is exactly asking the thing that we have just learned given a graph you have to find whether there exists a cycle or not if it doesn't exist print impossible otherwise print uh, find any one cycle and print the length of it and the cycle itself okay so i'll be providing the link for this problem in the description of the video so you can uh, solve that problem and see whether you have learned this technique or not okay so yeah this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching and till the next video drops keep coding thank you